Yes. Uh, now let's talk with you, Mr. Elijah. You had, you had earlier highlighted the uh, talked about religious sentiment, and let's see, quickly go back again to look at the role that religion plays in Africa's support on what is happening uh, between uh, Israel and uh, Gaza. And then, now, tell us a little the role religion is playing here, and uh, what possible outcomes should we expect, Doctor? Matsenga highlighted something just at the end of his uh, his statement. May now tell us a little. What do you <coughs> think the, the role of religion here and the possible outcome? I'm very happy to ask that, that question, Lois, because somebody like me, I'm a Christian, a devout Christian for that matter. But as an intellectual, I am not going to let my religious sentiments cloud my sense of judgment. And if Africa is going to come out of the doldrums of this division that exists in Africa, we must keep aside our religious sentiments, call a spade a spade. Because one of the things that is going to happen, Luis, ladies and gentlemen listening to me, one of the things that is going to happen as an outcome and a result of this conflict in the Middle East, like my colleague Dr. Masanga already mentioned, is that you're going to find a re of Africa within religious lines. You're going to find Northern Africa and those Arab countries are either going to gang up and either, no, let me refrain from the word gang up, either going to team up themselves, either start looking as if they are not part of the rest of Africa, which, to be honest with you, for those who are honest with themselves, that happened in different cases. Now, this is a further deepening of those lines deepening of fragmentation within Africa along religious lines. This is the number one consequence. Number two, we know that the 10 or 10 most neglected conflicts in the world are in Africa. What is going to happen is that these conflicts are going to be neglected. They are going to be looked be beyond that. People are done. A couple of days ago, weeks ago on your TV, you guys are talking about the killings that are happening in Cameroon and people beheaded and all whatnot. Is the world talking about it? Nobody thinks that this, nobody even knows that what's happening in Cameroon. I mentioned somewhere about this on the internet, one of the social media forums that we discuss about international issues. I mentioned Democratic Republic of Congo, Mali, Faso, Niger, and Cameroon, and things that are happening. Some people were like, is something happening in Cameroon? I'm talking about intellectuals who are into international relations and conflict resolution did not know that there's a war going on in Cameroon. That's to tell you that the more these issues are happening, the more the problems in Africa are being neglected. And the more fragmentation happens within the African Union, the more we are not moving ahead, the more people are going to see themselves along religious lines than seeing themselves as Africans. Because we have a common problem, whether you're coming from the north or the south, the problem is the same. Even Egypt, I will speak today, Egypt is going through one of the worst economic crises where the value of their currency has been valued. Whether you're talking about Algeria, you're talking about Morocco, you're talking about Senegal, it doesn't matter that they are religious, I mean, uh, uh, Muslims in Africa, we do not look at them as Muslims, we look at them as Africans. The same problem that we feel in Sub-Saharan Africa is the same problem that is being felt in Egypt. So these issues will comment Africa along religious lines. Number three, let us understand that in Africa, we have the issues of Boko Haram. We have issue of uh, Al-Shabaab. We have issues of all these other uh, uh, ISIS. It's also in Africa. If we start giving, using religious sentiments in order to evaluate some of these things, we are giving them an invitation to say, oh, these countries are now aligned with Hamas. These countries are now aligned with these organizations. Therefore, we can win sentiment. They are going to go into those countries and do massive recruitment of militants. I'm telling you this. Boko Haram is going to recruit. Ashaba is going to recruit. ISIS is going to rec uh, recruit within the population of Africa because they see that the sentiments in the Middle East are not being looked at from a pure logical perspective. They are being looked at through religious sentiments. And therefore, Africa is going to go into deep, deep trouble because of this. Fourthly, from a geopolitical perspective, we found that Israel has been I mean, coming closer to Africa. 
not in terms of religious sentiments. Let's understand this. I'm not talking about Israel coming in, trying to institute Judaism or Christianity. Israel has been coming in, trying to create alliances with a lot of countries in Africa, because when it comes to agriculture, Israel is one of the best in the world. They have been trying to create alliances. What is going to happen is some of these countries that have stood against and said, no discussion, oh, Hamas, they were fighting for their rights and so on. Do you believe a country with Israel, like Israel, that has been coming to, you know, trying to come closer to Africa with that technology, is going to go in to have this kind of agreement with countries that are openly siding with Hamas? Of course not. Of course not. So Africa needs to know its priorities. We need to understand what are our priorities. Who can we work with? Instead of using religious sentiments and say, oh, Hamas, this, that, terror is terror. Evil is evil. We must say this is wrong. Yes, not want people to be dying in Palestine. No one. No one will want people to be suffering in Palestine. But the palace of Yasser Arafat is not a Palestine of uh, Hamas. People need to understand this and make a demarcation. Yet Arafat was a two words for a two state federation in, in Palestine. The southern borders, the southern people, is not being controlled by Hamas. Those are not terrorists. Those people, you can go into negotiations with them. But if you are talking about Hamas and you're taking side with Hamas, you are taking side with terror. And nobody, it doesn't matter, the United States, I know a lot of people are going to dismiss and say, we don't care about the United States. We don't care about European Union. But the same people that we don't care about are the same people we are signing to contract and doing all these things with them. Nobody is going to work with a country that is openly siding with terror. Nobody wants terror. So Africa must understand what our priorities are, leave aside religious sentiments, call a spade a spade, and understand where we are going. Otherwise, the consequences are going to be dire on the continent of Africa. And I hope we don't go that route.